Good evening everybody, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to Tecton Zoo. I hope you're all doing okay today. I realised this week that this zoo is missing something pretty vital, which is hoofstock. Uh, we don't have a single hoofed mammal in this zoo. So today we're going to fix that. We're here in Tecton Desert and we're going to add my favourite antelope into the zoo, the beautiful Gemsbok. So the Gemsbok is an antelope native to the deserts of Africa. If you saw my Planet Wild episode last week, you'll know I'm a big fan of them. They're part of the Oryx family, uh, which includes a few different species of antelope, which are all really, uh, really beautiful, um, including the Arabian Oryx, uh, which lives in Arabia, as you would imagine. And um, they used to have those at London Zoo when I was a kid, and they were one of my favorite animals. Uh, if you imagine a gems box, but white, and with even more impressive uh, horns, that is, um, that is what they look like. I've been planning on adding the gems box to Tecton Desert ever since we built it, but I didn't really have an idea for the habitat itself, so I wanted to wait until I had a good idea for it before I started building it. So this is the first thing that I'm doing here. Um, I want a architectural motif that sort of um, embodies the gems box really, so I want to essentially recreate their horns so this was originally intended to go onto their inside quarters but um, scale wise when I finished it uh, it seemed too small to, to go onto the shelter and uh, I didn't really want to make it bigger because I liked the way it looked like this um, and also I cut most of it out but it took a while to find the pieces to get the effects that I want these are almost all from the Africa pack so many good pieces in that pack uh, so in the end, this little uh, motif ends up being part of the viewing galleries for the Gems Bok rather than on their shelter. But I'm pleased with how it turns out. I think it um, kind of brings to mind their uh, very impressive uh, horns, which are sort of ridged um, at the bottom and then smooth as they get to the top, which I've tried to replicate here. Uh, they don't need a great deal of space, Gems Bok. I've given them a lot more than they need, but not too much, so the viewing's still really good for the guests. There's going to be two viewing galleries in this habitat. One sort of where the, the camera was there, um, and then one round the other side, so you can see them from by the Cheetah Conservation Centre. I love it when two separate areas of the zoo start to come together. It's, uh, it's so satisfying. A uh, bit of a space issue in the enclosure here because this staff building I just sort of plonked down there when I first started the desert. So time to move that so that we've got some room for the gems box. So I just need to redo a little bit of pathing here, um, get that joined back up to the forest area and then we can get on to building the habitat itself. So firstly this is where the first viewing gallery is going to go. So I'm just extending the path a tiny bit there so that people can uh, get in and view. Um, and then we will start making the um, shelter. So the architectural style that, I've, um, that I'm using in the desert area of the zoo is more of um, an African modernist look rather than the, uh, I guess, European uh, 20th century modern style that I normally use. Um, so I've been looking around for inspiration and this motif here is taken from a building in Morocco, early 20th century modernist building there. Um, just this little uh, sort of A-frame shape that I really liked. I'm going to use that to base the rest of the shelter on. So these are going to act as the doors for the gems box to get through. So they're going to get bigger in a second once I've tested it to make sure that they can uh, they can walk through them. So you know the hitboxes in this game aren't the most forgiving. Uh, and then I'm going to use bricks behind them. Uh, I don't think I've ever used bricks in this zoo. Um, I don't think I've ever used these brick pieces to be honest. But I thought that would be a cool look. The original building it was all glass behind these frames. Um, and I didn't want the, uh, the gems box to fry, so I've gone with bricks instead. And I'm going to use some slightly different colours as well uh, for once. Um, although still tied in with the uh, 
the area of the zoo that comes next. So it's a, a black, well, a very dark grey and more of a sort of orangey, soily kind of um, colour. And the horn statue thing <laughs> that I created at the start is still part of the building at this point. Just while I'm finishing off that brickwork, um, I'll let you know what I've been up to this week, Planet Zoo wise. So um, lots of projects on the go at the moment. Um, I've mentioned before that I'm doing a collaboration zoo with a few other creators and that is getting very close to completion now. Um, we will be releasing some content from that pretty soon, perhaps within a week. Um, so really uh, looking forward to that. Some excellent creators in there. And it's been a real pleasure being able to build in uh, in a zoo with people building stuff that looks as good as uh, what they're building. So that will be on various channels over the coming weeks. But it's, I believe episode one will be on my channel uh, as I built the entrance to the zoo. And then it will be spread across various different channels um, for the, uh, the rest of the episodes. A few are mine and a few on some other people's. We've not quite finalised the details yet, but um, I'll have more news on that soon. And I've also just started the next episode of Planet Wild. I have a guest builder for this episode. Um, I'm essentially just going to be a, a tour guide, really. And um, I am so excited for it. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet, just in case something goes terribly wrong. <laughs> But um, they are absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to um, tour what they have created and uh, show you guys it because it is just mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. Um, but anyway, back to this build, very different to some of the other stuff in the zoo, but I think the uh, the white concrete arches and roof etc still tie it in nicely with everything else that we have here. Um, and we're going to need quite a bit of indoor space um, for the Gemsbok, um, obviously England and the African desert, fairly different climates. <laughs> um, for a lot of the year they're going to need an inside area, so I'm going to build them a nice one. Now it's nearly new DLC time, I hope you are as excited as I am. Um, I have been waiting for Californian sea lions since pretty much the day I bought Planet Zoo, uh, which was uh, shortly before Christmas last year, if I recall correctly. Um, I cannot wait to get those guys into Tecton Zoo, they're one of my favourite animals, they're such an amazing exhibit, um, they're often pretty short changed by their um, enclosures in zoos I find those guys you know in the wild those guys can roam around the oceans quite a long way from land obviously it is hard to to replicate that in a zoo environment um, but I often see them in zoos with really really poor um, accommodation so to speak even in in what you'd think of as, as good zoos. I saw some in um, a zoo a few months ago and I couldn't work out if the pool I was looking at was their entire area. Um, it didn't have anything joined to it, but I don't know if they had like a, a backstage pool or something. Um, I'm not sure, so I, <laughs> I won't name the zoo, just in case they've got loads more space that I'm not aware of. But the, uh, the, the pond that they had uh, just made me sad. Um, so I've also uh, seen their habitat in Yorkshire Wildlife Park which is amazing. It's an entire lake, um, I don't mean an enclosure that looks like it could be a lake, I mean it is literally a lake, a really big one which they have converted to um, to be filtered etc so that the, the sea lions can live in it and it is enormous. Um, I went there just after they got the sea lions which they moved in from Whipsonade. Um, they, they weren't on show yet so I've yet to see them actually in the uh, in the lake but I've seen the lake itself and yeah it's absolutely huge. Um, that is the sort of environment that those guys deserve. Um, I don't quite have enough space to do something on that scale in Tecton but I will be adding them um, and we will be building a big area for them um, which is uh, going to complete the, um, the four main areas coming off of the, the Grand Plaza. Um, so that was 
that was the one area that I was hoping would be some sort of aquatic or coastal area from day one but I just didn't really have the animals to do it justice um, having already used the king penguins for a penguin palace um, I toyed with the idea of using the grey seals but um, there was no other animals that went with them because the aquatic animals in Planet Zoo are really sort of um, split between different areas you know you've got like well the aquatic and semi-aquatic animals you've got like polar bears in the arctic you've got king penguins down in the antarctic uh, then um, grey seals in northern Europe um, the animals didn't really there was no animals that really sort of shared either a geographic location or even an environment but now with the California sea lion that goes very nicely environment wise with the African penguin um, obviously they live in different places but the actual environment that they live in is pretty similar um, South Africa and uh, California and Mexico so um, that is the the plan at the moment is that there's a coastal exhibit featuring those two animals so the sea lions are going to have a lot of space there I discovered the other day uh, which made me uh, which made me laugh I was watching um, what was it called the Imagineers I think it's called the uh, Disney sort of behind the scenes how Walt Disney and then the Disney company made their theme parks and um, there's a little section in uh, I think it's in the first episode when Walt Disney's talking about how he designed Disneyland um, and essentially he built a big circular grand plaza and then four large heavily themed areas uh, surrounding it like um, like a sort of pie chart uh, which really made me laugh because that's exactly how I designed this zoo having never been to Disneyland and having never had uh, any interest really in uh, in theme parks but um, the the first three of those areas obviously are complete the forest the desert where we are now and the jungle and the fourth area has just been empty ever since the zoo opened just because I was just waiting to hopefully get uh, an animal or animals that would make a aquatic exhibit their work so very very excited to finally be able to get cracking with that um, yeah let's get back to this build so we are working on the inside of the shelter here I'm trying to come up with some sort of gate thing uh, Planet Zoo is sorely lacking in any sort of um, backstage kind of stuff. You sort of have to custom make everything and that is not what I am uh, best at to be brutally honest. So I'm forced to build a sort of custom gate, just some bars that are removable to keep animals or one animal in there separated uh, if that needs to happen at any point. And as you've probably noticed, I don't spend too much time on the backstages in this zoo. I'm more uh, interested in what the guests can see and what the habitats look like from the outside. I learned that the Gemsbok are really shy. I had them in London Zoo 1985 and I had no end of problems with them and the bongos because back before you could move the zoo entrance, the, um, the entrance to my zoo was uh, on the opposite side of where it should be. I've moved it now, uh, now that we can change it and it's in sandbox mode as well. Um, so both the Gemsbok and the Bongos were pretty near the entrance so they got a lot of people watching them and they were stressed all the time. The um, alerts were driving me insane. Uh, I cannot go through that again. <laughs> so um, in this zoo what I'm doing is, apart from these couple of little enrichment items that you see here, all their food, drink, uh, bedding, etc., is going to be indoors, so they don't spend too much time outdoors, and they don't have to spend time outdoors sleeping or eating. They can just go outside whenever they want to, um, and that should stop them getting stressed. I hope. Um, going to build some custom fences here as well. Um, a little trick, in just in case you're not aware of it, if you want some nice curved fences like this but the type of fence that you want to use doesn't support curves. It only lets you do straight ones. All you need to do is build it with one of the fences that does let you curve it, like the concrete. 
and then select it and change it to whatever you want which is how I've been able to get these um, chain uh, link fences curved like that uh, but as it happens um, I end up getting rid of those and replacing them with some custom fences because I didn't think they looked uh, they didn't have the look that I wanted so I'm going to build some custom fences here to go around it just using an arch piece uh, and then some of the mesh pieces as well and I'll just sort of trace around the barriers that I've already put in there and then when I'm happy with the shape to uh, change all the barriers to null barriers. It's strange one of the um, sort of the most common things that you will see in zoos is fences obviously <laughs> lots and lots of lovely fences but I've actually got very little experience in building them because of the way that I designed this zoo with the um, habitats normally being sort of self-contained concrete structures in the tepton style or whichever modernist style that i've decided to go with for that particular habitat there's hardly any fences in this zoo um, i think the only fence in this zoo until i built this is the one that goes around the cheetah conservation center um, so it took me a while but this is what it looks like uh, from the first viewing gallery although the uh, some of the details of the viewing gallery itself aren't in yet but um, we'll come back to that and finish that off in a second but what we're going to do now is the inside of the habitat so fill it with sand obviously because they're a desert animal and then we're going to get some terrain variations in there and then start planting it up to get that desert vibe so the inside of the habitat is going to be based on uh, the environment I actually built in the Planet Wild episode I did last week because uh, that is a very similar environment and the gems Park live in both of them. So I'm actually going to use one of the little sort of bush scenes that I created for that episode here because I really like how that looks and then just use a load of African scrub and some rocks to tie the environment together and make it a nice home for the gems Bok. It is really nice to see them running around in here. Like I said earlier, I had them in London Zoo 1985 and it was such a tiny little um, enclosure, um, probably even smaller than it was in real life because I sort of ran out of room in that bit of it, but um, they could barely move. They can, um, they can definitely run around here. Um, I'm gonna put some more of the uh, horns onto that viewing gallery as well so it matches up nicely with the first one few improvements to their indoor area and their second viewing gallery where people can see them from the other side of the cheetah conservation center and that is the build done so i really hope you guys like it let me know in the comments as always what you think of it and i will see you again in two weeks time for another episode of tecton zoo and hopefully before that for the first episode of our collaboration zoo and the next episode of planet wild i've been busy <laughs> see you later guys bye